everybody, and welcome to the Life Purse Podcast. I've got some guests in front of me here. Can you guys introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Starfruit. I got second place in Swiss and top four at the Vegas GP. Yep, and uh, we got another person here who's the deck creator, the original deck creator. Can you introduce yourself as well? Oh, hi. Um, my name's, uh, I guess I go by Scob on Discord here. Um, well, I guess I won't say I'm the original deck creator, but um, you know, I'm, I've just been testing this deck with Starfruit for for many months. So, well, none of us created created a deck. We kind of stole the idea from Japan, and then we made some modifications. Yes, that's fair. <laughs> anyway, and, and, I've, and I've Scott, playing, you, uh, you also yeah. were first place last uh, last like online ceremony that was like a hundred and some players. Oh yeah, yeah. The the final online ceremony that they had, um, I placed first in the. That was like what P P zero four format or no P zero five format. Yeah, it, it was P zero five. It was, ago, it was but, when um, like uh, DS Adams just came out and X was mm-hmm. still like very popular. Yep. Anyway, I've been playing uh, Diva since it came out in English as well. So Starford and I are both long time players here. Sweet. Yep. So you guys. Um, Starfruit, you were the one who who ended up uh, going to the GP. You were testing stuff. What brought you to like this kind of setup, like in in general? Like, what was what was the the sort of thought that like went? Yeah, I think uh, this sort of mono white, but with like different colored uh, assists, could be a good choice here. Uh, it was due to a combination of factors. So one of them was I had to lend out two decks to the GP. Uh. So if you know Messiah, he uh, replay works. Yeah. Um, so he was coming to the GP with me, and he needed a deck. So I let him borrow uh, Dash Hirano, and um, uh, Shimizuki, the one that got second. Uh, he asked me for a Deus Adam deck, so I let him borrow a deck. Okay, so uh, so s- secretly your your decks are actually second, fourth, and uh, and I think you got like top thirty two. So you got you got yeah. three different rankings. Well, it's the pilot, you know. They they're <laughs> the ones that did very well with it. But yeah, since uh, I lent out those two decks, I was left with Tama as my option. And since Scott was doing uh, well with the deck in uh, online events and uh, locals, I figured I just cop his list. And uh, just change some stuff around uh, for the event. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so okay, all right. Well, that was the original thing of it, but it ended up doing doing pretty pretty well uh, at the GP. What what kind of like testing and changing were you doing before the GP happened? That like we're like, yeah, this is this is really starting to work out towards your favor. Well, we knew the deck was good before like we started testing the GP because. Galvin and I, we just tested, like, this deck versus a bunch of other matchups. Um, I, I'll tell you, like, the changes I did make, though. So, um, initially, uh, we had Zhao Yun's instead of Tokuyuki. Mm-hmm. But um, I made the last-minute swap because the games I lost are when your opponent, like, discards you out, and then they attack your entire field, and then you have nothing left. So I wanted as many big signies that I could just put down, not get attacked over, so that way I could just have a constant field and just be able to double swing. Um, it's funny too, because when Scob initially made the list, he was on Tokiyuki, and I to- convinced them to play Zhao, and then like I backtracked myself. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, was, that was a long debate we had back and forth for a while on uh, yeah, what goes like, in that level one slot there. Yeah, that slot was... <laughs> It was driver's license, Zhao Yun, and uh, Tokiyuki. We were shuffling between the three for a while, but we ended up on Tokiyuki, which ended up did mattering because uh, I think I played against a pure look, and I had zero cards. They had six cards, and they couldn't kill the Tokiyuki because it was too big. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, we we um, Tiffany also played mono white, and you know I played Esper, but it has white walls in it. I found Tokiyuki to be really strong there too, and inevitably we both switched over to like most, mostly Tokiyuki just because it was sort of like this catch-all. It, it not only stopped Dash Hirana and these aggro decks, but it was also weirdly good against the control decks because the, a lot of them were running ways to do negative 3,000 and not necessarily negative 8,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, for Life Burst, um, 
Scop had, uh, you had like what, f four different cards, I think? Oh, and uh, the other variant. Yeah, I was testing a few different things um, for that Link slot. I, I had never played with Lynx, but you had decided that, you know, you want something to remove uh, larger things like like uh, H2Os and whatnot, right? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the games you lose are when they put a Signy and you have no way to uh, kill it. That's why Burning is in there too. Um, just flipping a Lynx Burst to just hit anything was pretty nice. But um, the other thing too was uh, you don't want to shotgun Umer Clear. You want to hold on to it as long as you can and find a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you'll be stuck on 6 limit a lot. So your boards will be 3 two, one And Lynx just is another level 2 that you could just put down. It's big and uh, just fills up the gap. Totally makes sense to me. So speaking of uh, of level twos, um, I'm noticing that uh, you know again you, you you made the swap over to uh, from being a mono white deck that's using like two white assists. So you're not running white heaven and you're not running. Um, I'm brain farting on the name here, but the the level two that's uh, that's that's 14k. You're running the extra oh, one. Dobby. Love Dobby. Thanks. Um, so what was it that that made you think like? I, these cards are less important than some other replacement cards that I can throw in here, including stuff like Picture Frame, I assume. Um, but then also, you know, getting this variety of color in your Elrig deck. Uh, all the all the white assists suck. <laughs> Akino is kind of trash. Lion's okay, but um, Lion level 1 doesn't help you dig for guards, uh, which is something I especially wanted. Um, the other thing too was uh, Ludavi is like it's a good, it's an okay payoff, but um, superhero is a better payoff for pay playing uh, the black and blue assist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and superhero, so sometimes uh, mill ten isn't quite enough, but superhero gets you gets you there. I, I assume versus the slower decks, which is where you need the extra damage burst. Uh, superhero is mainly just to find uh, guards and whatever stuff you need to fill up the field. But the other thing too is with Umer Clear, uh, you could, since you do a lot of bouncing uh, with cards like Over Pursuit and Flash Card, yeah. uh, you could just you could just bounce all the cards to your opponent's hand, superhero them. Uh, they have like a low amount of cards in their deck, and then you could Umer Clear and just rip their entire hand. And the ruling is, let's say that your opponent has. Um, five cards but they have two cards in deck they'll discard a five and draw the two and deck out oh that's actually that's really excellent i didn't actually make the connection there between those two but that's a fantastic way to use it so that's why when you were saying you were holding off on umir clear it was not something that you just immediately did yeah i held on to that card a lot um i expected a lot of people to play uh halasta saber as well uh Every time I saw someone play a black and blue uh, white combination, I assumed they were on Halasta Saber. Yep. So I held Uma Clear as long as I can until they revealed the Halasta Saber or like a second piece. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And then Burning Curiosity is, I guess, a cheaper but also one half of a of a white heaven. Something that I found too when I was playing the um, more mono white uh, version of this with with uh, with white heaven is that sometimes against these other esper decks that are sort of like enter starving you you don't really get the enter to use the white heaven you have to sort of choose between your assists or your white heaven so is burning curiosity also kind of uh, a, a give on that like since it does do the whole like get rid of it without giving them a resource but it is cheaper is that is that something you found to be like really successful with your, this build uh kind of but the main reason why i played uh burning curiosity was um, the deck struggles with outing Zygnes, um that are not level 1s. Uh, so like Flash Card over Pursuit, they could hit almost every level 1 in the game. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say your opponent has like a Phalaris um, or like a Gable. You want to like get rid of those cards immediately, but you don't want to be like swinging into them. Uh, especially when you have a hold op open and then you also want to do a Tama double swing. Mm -hmm. So you could just uh, Burning Curiosity, XC, get it out of the game, and just attack the lane, and then try to, like, Tama double swing. Um, this, uh, this like, one of the changes I made last minute. Uh, 
it's not a burning we actually play the Xeno cluster. But um this deck doesn't die to discard really because you have so many cards that just net you advantage like superhero. If they disc discard you down to zero, you can just go more clear to draw one card. Um which is sometimes all you need. Uh so you we would only just be playing Xeno Cluster for Ener Burn, which is something we respected, but uh, we just felt burning was a little bit more uh, versatile uh, because when your opponent makes a two two one board, um, you can out the level one with like an over pursue or a flash card. You can out the first level two with a day drive, but then the second level two becomes a little hard to out. So there are games where I just go burning on uh, turn two, exceed four, and just how to open three. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, and you bring up a good point. I mean, like, so you're an aggro deck. You don't necessarily need to have a full hand the entire game. You're not looking to go to, like, eight turns if you can help it. So just getting the extra single card to help you make sure you you make that single turn could be the difference between winning and losing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think it was a great last-minute uh, change. Um, Starfruit decided, and uh, we tested a little bit, and we're like, okay, this is putting in so much work. It's kind of crazy. Another yeah. point I was going to mention about that is like uh, something that I kind of employed at the the uh, previous online ceremony with my list is uh, I was also on Zeno swap to burning last minute and you kind of you kind of want to play like a phantom Zeno right you, uh, I don't know if Starfruit uh, did you like kind of use this tactic at all and pretend pretend you were on Zeno in some of your matchups Yeah, there were some but, games I, where I didn't have a good burning line, so I just held onto it and just pretended I was on Zeno cluster. Yeah. And I think that has a lot of value as well in this kind of game in, in a in a blind uh, deckless tournament sending. Yeah, there, there are times in, in my matches where I knew I was up against a discard mirror uh, and they would discard me. They'd be like, all right, go to the tax step. And I'd be like, hold on a second. Just deciding. Nah, yeah, it's fine. You I, I did some. I just I, I did some. I sometimes did that when they ended up bringing me one. I'm like, mm, think. <laughs> I'm like, oh, OK, go ahead. <laughs> just, you know, put the fear in them. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Once and then once you show the burning curiosity, um, it really takes them out of surprise. Um, <laughs> yeah, there were like a game too where some people thought I was on Halusta Saber because they saw the Mastima, so they thought I played like a, a single Falaris and a Halusta Saber. So, uh, some someone actually they had an Exia on the field. They trashed it. They were like, "Oh, this Exia is not doing anything." They played something else, and then on my follow up, I went. Orochimaru, Burning Curiosity, Tama OPG, and then uh, he Halasta sabered himself and went Umar Claire ripped his entire hand and I hit two guards. <laughs> I think and, I, I heard someone tell me about that uh, yeah. post. -it. Yeah, and I ripped the two guards. There were four guards in trash and um, he was Omega dead. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it seems like the more you talk about it, the more the Umir Clear is like sort of the knowledge test of the deck. Like it really, like the Umir Clear is really making or breaking whether you're you're winning those those games because it's just difficult to to know when exactly to run it. I, I found similar sort of results there too. I you know on the channel a lot of people sometimes will comment that Umir Clear doesn't do enough work, um, and I am always like it actually does a fair amount of work. It's just difficult to know when exactly to pull it off. Yeah, Umer Clear is pretty hard to use because um, some you uh, there are times where you do need to get to seven limit, so you have to fire the Umer Clear just to get the extra limit. Um, plus, the other thing too is when you grow it, the discard is mandatory. So when you rip your hand, sometimes your hand that you draw afterwards might not be as optimal as you want it yeah, to be. Yeah, super great. But. Um, you do have to like just know when to play this card and it does reward you like uh even like brush drawing a ton is very helpful there was one game where um i refreshed my deck and i needed to find a remember and a over pursuit or a second remember any combination of the two cards and i knew how many cards i i knew i shuffled back four remembers and four over pursuits i had like eight cards in hand and i just said all right the last turn i'm just gonna umer clear and then i just drew nine cards and i found double remember over pursuit and i won the game because of that got it yeah that makes sense and while we're talking about umer clear just to just to sign umer clear out of there um how often did you freeze an l rig with it i froze two tamas and that was good that was pretty good <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so the two Tamas, and then and then the rest of the time it was more just just for hand stuff. You weren't really freezing with it. Yeah, it's catching Halusta sabers, um, trying to deck your opponent out. Um, there are times I think there's like a couple times where I do actually like freeze them. Uh, I can't recall like all the situations, but I I definitely know I just like I just froze them just just so uh uh just to save myself a damage. Yeah, makes sense. Like if you don't have a guard, it's basically pretends to be a guard. Um, yeah, essentially. What about uh, Deus Shield? So uh, clearly, Deus Shield is mostly a two stop. But um, did you did you manage to get it as to be a three? Well, I guess you couldn't. You weren't playing any black. No, I do. I have Mastima. Oh yeah, the, you have three uh, Mastima. Yeah, uh, I I did a three stop with this multiple times. Got it. Um, so is that something that you 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 do? Is that if you've got a Mastima in hand, you usually either hold it in hand or or enter charge it and just sort of leave it there to, to I just. just- I just enter charge it and leave it there. Got it, got it, got it. All right. That seems to make the, the most sense out of, out of everything I'm seeing here. The only other thing that I, I got a question for you about is, um, so I, I've heard people talk about playing their white aggros, and I and I see polarizing opinions on Exia. Some people really love it there. Some people really hate it and want it to be something else. So it, you're running for Exia, so clearly you like it in this build. What's your reasoning for it? Uh, it's a good card. That's all I could say. Uh, so, but the serious answer is, um, I don't know what I would replace it with. Uh, I know some people like Sila. Uh, I don't think Sila is that great because it's only really good against like a very narrow scope of cards, such as Volaris, um, X, maybe when they have Assassin. But the burst is not that good, um, and Exia in general uh, is better matched against other decks uh, more than Sila could ever be. Yeah, totally, totally a fair call. Yeah. Uh, the other thing too is your boards are like really sticky. Like you could just put um, Exia, Remember, and then like a Tokiyuki, and that's like the numbers are just so big. And if they were to kill one, the Exia will just block the lane. And so you force them to have a Yuki Memoria or a second way to uh, kill a Signy, which you, which they might not have. Yeah, totally makes sense. I think, yeah, Yuki is a bit of a work workhorse in a lot of these decks. I'm, I'm happy to see you're also running two. I, I know some people run three, but there's a fair amount of draw on this deck. So it does feel like you can get to that Yuki pretty quickly if you need it. Uh, it's Yuki's good, but the... Uh, rest of the cards are uh it's like a little hard to find space for the third yuki like you want to see four toki yuki you want to see four over pursuits um like the two flat two picture frames the three flash cards the three muslim and two orochi it's, it's like so hard to cut space for a third yuki yeah it so makes sense. we just love that too and uh, speaking of that that picture frame, I assume it's just there to make numbers easier for you. Like this allows you to be more aggressive, allows you to attack op- with two open lanes, and then also still get in for two damage with uh, Tama. I think that's its main purpose in the stack. Uh, yeah, it also lets you do a lot of safe attacks. You could just open one uh, attack with the picture frame line. If they burst uh, and kill a Signy, that's fine. You just attack with the Tama. The picture frame re ups herself, and then you still have two Signies to go down. Yep. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Um, okay, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about the, the, the deck as in general, or any changes you'd make it moving forward? Uh, changes, probably not. Uh, there's not. I think the list is fine as it is. Um, uh, I, the one thing I do want to say is uh, Clear and uh, Shield are like also really good against like Tama Mirrors, because you could freeze the Larig, and you have a full stop that blocks Tama's attacks, whereas if they're playing something like Model White or uh, uh, Blue and Black with Madoga Clap, uh, you could just do a bunch of double swings and their full stop doesn't do anything against you. Right, yeah. So your assist- say, like, the the level two assist was a big debate topic we had for a while, right? About yeah, yeah. I think um, annoying signies, um, you know, such as uh, the Terra Beast package or Laralu. And it ultimately kind of steered us to favor clear over, um, you know, other full stop options, right? 
Yeah, yeah. She all just stops Tengu, Lalaru. Yeah. Um, I didn't face any X, but um, it was something we had in mind uh, when we encountered those matchups. Yeah, when we I looked at so so Hellfire just recently released sort of like the the L rigs that that made it into top sixty four and all that junk. Um, and there was a fair amount of X. I I played two X's, so it was around. It just it's always interesting to talk to the other top eighters because some of them are like, yeah, I, I played nothing but Esper, and then I'm over here being like, yeah. I played nothing but aggro. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, there's something else I wanted to say about uh, these two, but I don't... Oh, yeah. Uh, so, one of the things that I was particularly scared of was uh, Nobunaga. Um, you get Nobunaga open one lane and just double crush and attack at that single lane. And uh, if you look at it, the uh, assists right here, they don't have anything that interacts with Signes. Um so that Nobunaga with Double Crush is getting through, you're taking two damage. Um, so we were debating about putting Madoka uh, with Madoka Dub. Uh, mm-hmm. But we just ended up not doing it because we just thought the applications of Umer Clear was a lot stronger than Dub could ever be. Yeah, I, I mean, I tend to agree with you. I think just the at, at the high, high, high end of events, right? People are setting up their hands, especially with this this Esper craze. And to be clear, like looking at the data, it's about twenty five to thirty percent Esper that was at that GP. Um, so I think you made the right call here, being able to just sort of screw hand set up. Yeah, that that was just like so huge. Yeah, uh, superhero clear was definitely like all-star throughout the entire tournament totally um all right i unless you guys have anything else to to chat about with the this this upcoming stuff or if there's anything you change in in set 10 for this type of deck i think we got it all covered guys uh i don't i wouldn't make any changes uh scob do you have any thoughts that you want to say um no this uh, you know the list is fairly tight um it's funny because you know we we tested this list even against uh, uh, current format uh, P14. Oh yeah, we were... still performed quite well, very well. Yeah, we were we were playing some Dissona versus this deck, and it still did. Uh, it still held its ground. Uh, it was funny too because um, Neat and uh, Dusel they were playing a Dissona versus uh, this deck too. And Lucio still won with this deck, despite playing against Dash Haneo. It was really funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, you know, this deck is mainly inspired from the most recent GP in Japan, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Did we, did we touch on that point there? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's an important part to mention. So, um, when we were looking at uh, Japan's fifth GP, that's basically just enough format. Uh, we saw this Mono White Tama list just sneak into top 16 and we're just like well all these cards are p9 legal let's give it a shot right and it ended up doing really well for us yeah i was i was basing a lot of my esper decisions also off of some stuff that i was seeing in um gp4 and gp5 which are you know future gps not that we're that we're we're close to but it didn't change the fact that the esper shell was sort of getting more and more perfected by that point so i could use foresight to sort of like solidify what our esper shell is here in the u.s right it's helpful to kind of like be like okay well we don't have this card yet but what's the closest thing we have that kind of serves the same purpose, right? And that's right. like a lot of the debate we had there. Um, so last thing I want to ask you guys real quick before I, I let you on go is the um, is the matchups. So when I talked to you in person, um, it seemed like you were pretty confident about pretty much every single matchup. Um, inevitably, your only losses were to uh, to to a Adams deck and one other deck, right? Right. Uh, I lost to Waku in round seven, um, in Swiss. That was Adams. Yep. And then in top eight, I went 2-1 against Lancet's Madoka deck. Uh, and then Shimizuki beat me in top four with a 2-0. Got it. So, so, um, it was two Adams decks and they were really, really good players. So, so I'm not to, don't, don't get take what I'm saying weird, but is, does this deck you think ha- a little soft to Adams? Uh, I would say it's, it's a bit even, um, both decks are just open three and you just try to go fast. Um, the, like, 
the games where I lost against uh, Shimizuki, he uh, uh, he had one card in hand, and I had a Umer clear up, and I was like, hmm, do I Umer clear and snipe a guard, or do I just risk? Do I do I just like go for it? Yes. And I took the risk and. Umer cleared him, and he Zeno clustered and drew into the guard, and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> but if I didn't do it, I could have just double swang and won that game, too. But uh, it, uh, it's all just, like, part of the game where uh, both decks just go fast, and then on the last turn, you had to, like, really think carefully on how to kill them. Gotcha. So, so uh, just in general, you, I think I remember talking to you, and you said this deck is actually genuinely pretty good against aggro. Is that because of all those sort of, like, white walls that you've got, you think? Yeah, all the walls uh, stop cards like uh, Real Mail, uh, Lancelot. Um, plus, you have Umer Clear. Uh, I was like pretty scared of Dash. Uh, we did a lot of Dash Dash versus uh, this deck uh, matchups. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Umer Clear just helps you stall out one turn against Dash if they swing with the Hirana level 2. So you can just freeze it and then just try to get some turns to set up. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, it, it, Dash is one of those ones where it's like, and it, it, it turned out to be true, it happened at the GP, or the Japanese GP, it happened at our GP. Sort of like, uh, it's it's a good deck, and it, it, it punishes sort of those greedy decks, but at the same time, it has just enough amount of like, it just blows up on itself sometimes, that like, you just kind of hope that you dodge it and, and move forward with, with it, and the best you can really do is make it sort of that 50% matchup, at least that's what I did. Yeah, it's it's a scary matchup. But Dash in general is just one of those scary decks that you have to respect in the Yeah, I mean you're telling me, man. I I, I, I I managed I played against it round one and went this is the one this is the one matchup I was trying to avoid the whole way, but <laughs> fine, here we are. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't pair against uh, Messiah. He, he was playing Dash, and he was just telling me stories about how he like dashed people. I was like, oh, thank God, I'm you know, like on the other side of the uh, room. Yeah, it's funny. No, no Dash really cracked uh, top 16, though, I think. If I remember correctly, X was the only red deck that cracked top 16. Yeah, I was surprised, too. Um, well, anyways, guys, thanks for coming along and, and giving me the the tour of this deck. Uh, I definitely learned some new stuff, and I'm eager to try this out at some point. Um, so thank you for for this and and sort of taking the tech that you found in Japan and uh, updating it to America and showing that it's got some legs. Uh, do either of you guys want to plug any socials or anything before we go? Uh, you could follow me at starfruit underscore tcg on Twitter. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't really post that much on social media. Yeah, I'm not a big social media person myself, but um, yeah, I'm pretty active on the, in the uh, We Cross Dis- Discord communities. You can find find me there. Yeah, oh, yeah, me I, too. Yeah, you'll find yeah. both of us there. I see you guys are both pretty quick to answer questions on on the Discord as well. So I, I I've always appreciated that. Uh, Starfruit, I'll I'll go ahead and plug that you've got a, a TCG channel or a TCG uh, TCG store. So if uh, if you guys want to buy some cards from Starfruit and support him testing out some new brews and stuff, go ahead and uh, check out his TCG shop. Oh yeah, Starfruit cards. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, And as always, I hope everyone who listens takes this deck, tries it out, and flips some life bursts. See you later. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.